Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to return to Belgium and we're going to have a look at another beer from a brewery who are pretty well known worldwide actually when it comes to Belgian beer. So for this one we're going to go to a little bit to the north of Ghent to a little place called Erkvelde and we're trying yet another beer from Brauerei van Steenberg. This must be the seventh review or so that I've done from these guys. So for this one we're going to have a look at another beer in the Golden Drac range. This one is the Golden Drac Brewmasters edition of 2019 coming in at 10.5%. From what I gather, this one is supposed to be a very strong golden Belgian blonde ale, um, but it should be really interesting. I mean, I always enjoyed the regular Golden Drac, which was kind of like a triple, and there was also the Golden Drac. Um, was it the 10,000 or whatever it was called? Um, but they had the quadruple one as well. And very recently, I had their uh, Imperial Stout, which was also a very nice beer. So I'm really curious to see what this one throws up, actually, and to see how it's different from the original Golden Drac. Um, so really looking forward to trying this one. This is another beer that came through the small partiers in Seistan Bolaga on the 17th of May, 2019. So as always, I'm looking forward to this, and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brauerei van Steenbergen before. No doubt I will add some more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Brauerei van Steenberger then. So the history of the van Steenberg brewery goes back to the year 1784 and as I mentioned to you earlier, this brewery is located in Erkvelde, a little bit to the north of Ghent and it was founded by Jean-Baptiste de Bruyne under the name de Pierre. Following his death though, his wife Angelina Patronella Shelfo continued the brewery and she in turn passed on to her cousin Joseph Shelfo who had assisted her in the brewery for many years and was quite familiar with the brewing that went on there. His daughter Margaret mar married Paul van Steenberg who was a uh, professor of microbiology at the Ghent Brewing School and Paul van Steenberger took charge of the brewery following the end of the First World War and he changed the name of the brewery to Brewery Bio uh, after one of the beers that they released at the same time. But he was very interested in politics and he also served as the mayor of Erkvelde and as a senator in the Belgian parliament but he was a real businessman and he launched several other beers during his tenure, tenure such as the, um, the Bios Flemish Bourgogne which was an old brown beer and also the Leuterbock as well which was a lager and he made major investments in the brewery including a new brewing hall, new tanks and he also initiated the switch from wooden barrels to glass bottles for selling the beer as well but in truth Paul's instincts as a businessman always outweighed his passion for brewing and he put the brewery into a collective as a means to cut costs for the company. But all this time his wife Marguerite had uh, had their son Josef van Steenberg under her wing and she kind of saw this as a sellout having inherited the brewery from her father but Josef inherited her passion for the brewing and when his father died in 1962 Josef took over the management of the brewery and focused the brewery on the production of high fermentation beers. Like his father before though he was also passionate about politics and he only fully focused on the brewery at the age of 64 after service as a mayor and also as a senator in the Belgian parliament as well, which ended in 1978. He got rid of the malt house and the hot plantations planted by his grandfather Josef Shelfo and decided instead that the brewery should purchase its raw materials but with very very specific specifications. In 1978 the company also acquired the recipe for the beer of the Augustine Friars who brewed their beer in the Ghent Monastery and this was then fine tuned and then released in 1982 and he also completed his range of high fermentation beers that year as well. Upon launching the range though there wasn't really a strong demand for these kind of high percentage beers. Um, and actually it, it took until 2000 or so for the brewery to kind of turn itself around when, when the market started to pick up but thanks to this the brewery kind of survived and continued to grow but in 1990 Joseph's son Paul took over the company and he modernised the brewery building a, few, a new fully automated brewing hall and also a computerised barrel system was installed as well but he also put in a new water purification system a new bottling installation and also a steam plant with natural gas and he was joined by his cousin Yef Frisella 
Canada and he expanded the company's export market mainly to the US, the Netherlands and Italy as well and he's also involved in the brewing these days. But the brewery's main brands of beer are the Golden Drac, the Pirat which you've seen me review before as well and also the Augustine range. I think you've seen me review a beer, um, I've reviewed two or three beers from Golden Drac already. I've reviewed two or three from Pirat and I've also reviewed one from the Augustine range too. Um, but for this range in particular, the Golden Drac the name of this one has a bit of an interesting story as well. The name Golden Drac comes from the Gilded Dragon statue on top of the Belfry in Ghent, and it's said that this Gilded Dragon first featured on the pro of the ship of the Norwegian King Sigrid Magnusson, who left Norway on crusade in the year 1111, but he offered the statue to the Emperor of Constantinople, which is obviously Istanbul today to put atop of the Hagia Sophia. A few hundred years later though, the Flemish Count Baldwin IX thought that the dra he took the dragon to Bruges and after the Bevereux battle in 1382, the dragon was taken to Ghent by the inhabitants and placed atop the belfry to protect the city. So the Golden Drac name actually comes from one of the statues on top of the Belfry Cathedral in Ghent itself. So pretty cool actually. Um, and I do always like this about Belgium and Germany where they take little local things and use those to, uh, to name their beers. It's very cool actually that these traditional breweries have survived for uh, such a long time. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Brauerei van Steenberg just now and the Golden Drac name. Uh, as I say, a lot of history behind these guys and that's what you're going to find with quite a lot of different breweries in both Belgium and, uh, and Germany right enough. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. If you want to learn more about the brewery, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below and of course you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that as well. I do believe they have separate um, social media accounts depending on what range of beer it is that you're interested in. But yeah, let's get on to the tasting of this one then. So as you can see, the artwork of this one is really nice. I do like the that little almost gilded metal thing that they have off the golden rack there. Very, very distinctive symbol these days. There you can see, um, bottled in 2019, aged in Ghent. You could actually age this beer for quite a long time, I guess, if you wanted to. It recommends on the back here that you drink this one before uh, the 11th of September. 2021. But yeah, nicely presented this one. As you can see, the limited edition Brewmasters Reserve of 2019, 10.5%. There's the Brewerei van Steenberger symbol on the top there. And uh, that the golden drag symbol is also on this little kind of cork top thing that we have too. So yeah, really nicely presented beer this one. So without further ado, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting. And I'm just very curious to see exactly how this beer uh, it turns out. Uh, I should tell you the importer for this one into Sweden is actually Wicked Wines as well. So yeah, you can see they've got nice customised little uh, corks on this one as well. But you can see some nice smoke on the opening there. I think that's pretty awesome. So let's get some of this beer out and into the glass and just see how we get on. No idea really what to expect from this one. But yeah, you can tell already with this. This is going to be a little bit of a monster. So yeah, as you can see with this beer then, it's poured a really nice kind of rich amber colour actually. It's almost, it's not too far away from mahogany to be honest. It's almost like a very dark um, blood orangey colour to be honest with you with a little, uh, with almost being a little bit of a shade of mahogany. Um, crystal clear this one incidentally. Um, if I put my fingers behind the glass there you can see some really nice um, transparency to this beer. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it might be a little bit hazy, but um, a finger or so of a bumpy, I would say, kind of cream, fawny coloured head on this one actually. There's some lovely fruity aromas coming out of this beer just as we move it around, but one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there, but you know, Overall, it does look um, very, very nice, this one. Incidentally, this beer was uh, brewed by Jeff Bersela to tri as a tribute to his grandfather, Josef van Steenberger, and it was also for the brewery's 230th birthday as well. I think I mentioned that at the start of the video, but I forgot to do it just as we opened the beer up. But um, yeah, it's a lovely colour, this one. I don't... I can't think I've ever had one of these Belgian strong ales that's had such a mahogany tint to it, to be honest with you. So, a really interesting looking beer. So, yeah, um, as I always say, um, Belgian beer, it can throw up a, a couple of surprises. And this one, to me, is just a little bit darker and more rich looking in terms of a Belgian strong ale, to be honest. But, you know, that's one of these styles that comes from, like, rape beer or something. I'm guessing this one is just supposed to be a very nice version of the... Uh, the original Golden Drac, which is in some ways very much like a tripel. But yeah, um, let's take a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on with this beer. 
Oh, yeah. That's really nice. So, straight away with this one, you get that nice big Belgian yeasty quality. For me, the Belgian beer is all about what the yeast contributes to the beer. You can smell this really, really nice bready malt base to it. It's kind of like a white bready quality, and um, it's almost got a little bit of the kind of banana, clovey sort of thing to it, which is nice. And um, but it's not too pungent actually. It's just got a very nice balance to it. There's some nice sort of um, caramelly brown sugars to this one. It's also got a biscuity element to it as well. Yeah, definitely a sort of kind of candied caramelly brown sugar coming out of this beer. But yeah, it smells lovely actually. Very, very sweet smelling beer this one generally. The brown sugars come across as a little bit syrupy the more and more you smell it to be honest. But you can really tell that this beer, it's almost got a little bit of a medicinal quality to it. Almost a little bit of a kind of cough syrupy thing, which is interesting when you consider that this is more of a golden beer rather than a brown beer. Because normally it's the Dubels especially that I found that give you this almost phenolic quality out of them. But this golden beer does have just a little bit of that fruity medicinal kind of quality to it, which is very interesting actually. But yeah, malt base, like I said, some nice, <clears throat> very smooth bready qualities in there, the nice thicker doughy yeasty notes, there is a little tiny touch of banana to this one but it's not overpowering um, and some lovely biscuity and brown sugary uh, notes coming out of this beer, it's got quite a toasty note to the brown sugars as well but at the same time it comes across as being sort of medicinally and uh, and uh, phenolic in some respects too. You can definitely smell a little bit of the hoppy quality coming out of this one You've got a little touch of that kind of grassy note in there, just has a little bit of that grassy, citrusy note. There's also a little touch of a floral quality, but the floralness for me is quite minimal, and there's maybe a teeny bit of earthiness too. This beer does have a good complexity to its nose, incidentally, so as I always say, take a bit of time and just enjoy that before you get stuck into the beer. That's always half the experience when it comes to different craft beers and things like that, although I don't know if it's right to call these Belgian beers craft beers. They are just, you know, Belgian beers. Um... But yeah, <clears throat> to me, that comes across uh, really, really quite nicely, actually. I, I love the aroma from this one. The fruity side of this beer is very interesting. You've definitely got some of these kind of peary, apple um, almost orchard esters coming out of the beer. But at the same time, you've got a little bit of a kind of figgy note, a little bit of a kind of candied strawberry, and maybe even some kind of black currenty notes in there as well, which is interesting. Yeah, and as I say, that medicinal kind of quality that this beer has, that almost phenolic quality, is really kind of mixing in with the soil. When you sugar the beer up, it definitely gets more of that kind of red and um, fruity ester quality actually, which is um, which is really interesting. Um, but yeah, it's a really compared to some of the other beers that I've had, especially these Belgian Golden Strong Ears, this one's a little bit more kind of candied and sugary in that sense. And the medicinal quality, like I say, is quite interesting because normally I would expect that from a sort of Dubel or a Brune beer rather than anything else. But yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it. It does have a very nice in-depth and complex aroma. I would say there's maybe a little touch of a woody quality to this beer as well. But without further ado, let's get stuck into this one and see how we get on. So this one is the Golden Drank Brewmasters Edition, uh, the 2019 vintage from Brauerei van Steenberger in Erdfelder to the north of Ghent in Belgium. Let's get stuck into this beer. Slange, Skull, Proust, Salty. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, it's actually not as caramelly and malty um, as I was expecting in the beginning. Um, it's got a very light impact to it, this beer, but, you know, when it's kind of pushing through and you start to get all these flavours in the aftertaste, I think that's where this one really shines actually. This is one of these beers that I think is a little bit more about the aftertaste than it is about the kind of initial flavour itself, if that makes sense. Um, at least that's my first impression from the little sip that I've had. But yeah, I'm just going to say straight away, thumbs up to Brara van Steenberger again here. They've done a a really nice job on this one actually it's um it's definitely it i mean it's almost like a kind of barrel aged version if you like it's got a, 
This is one of these beers where it's all about the kind of subtleties and nuances to sound kind of posh and stuck up and things like that. This is definitely one of these beers that's all about the subtleties rather than being very straight up and very punchy actually. Yeah. I like how this one um, goes together actually. It really is just a very nice beer. It's got a good balance between the more malty notes and the, the esters. The malts and the esters are very well balanced in this one actually. Which is, is really nice. Um, we'll go with the hoppy side of this beer then because it's you know that's probably the most straight up part of it. I mean in the back corners of the palate you can pick up a little bit of that earthiness there and you know as you come further forward along the tongue it just becomes a little bit drier and more kind of floral. The floral quality is quite minimal on this. You're not going to get much in the way of IBUs out of this beer. I think you'd be lucky if you got about 40, maybe even just 30 out of it actually. Um, but then as you go around the very front curve of the tongue this beer is most definitely a little bit lighter and more um, grassy in my mind. The malt base and the way the malts and the yeast interact in this one is where it gets really interesting. So with this beer, I mean straight away, you can see, um, it, you know, the the there's just this nice bready quality. It just blankets the middle of your tongue. You can feel that form in the base of the beer. You've got some of these thicker, doughy, yeasty elements coming out of the. Um, the yeasty side of it as well and it, it does have a little edge of almost a banana flavour to it but it's quite a smooth banana it's almost the banana is just more like a kind of subtlety and there's a sort of woody um, quality all kind of infused within that which is really interesting and um, so the middle of your palate in this beer has a hell of a lot of activity going on and the woodiness pushes its way out a little bit further and uh, when you come forward on the sides of the palate as well if you just go along the sides of your tongue where I was talking about the hoppy notes coming out, just go just inside of that a little bit and that's where you'll get these nice woody qualities coming out of the beer as well. So yeah, the middle of the palate on this one really is quite alive actually. If you go to the very centre of your tongue and just come forward a little bit, there is a little touch of a nutty note to this one, but there is almost a kind of grainy quality that's coming out further in the aftertaste as well. But in the very centre of your palate, that's where the nice brown sugary notes come out of this beer. And it has this sort of syrupy quality to it. Um, it's more of a caramel rather than anything else. It's not quite dark enough to be like treacle or molasses or anything. It's more a kind of sweet caramel in there, but it does have a very caramelised um toasty feel to it at the same time. There is a little touch of darkness in the brown sugars there, but this is definitely, most definitely caramel rather than, um, you know, rather than being um, a sort of treacle molasses kind of thing or anything else. Um, so yeah, and the further you move out from the centre of your palate, from that very sweet oily brown sugar note in there, it's got a little touch of a, a more biscuity element to the beer as well. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff kind of going on in this one and it does actually feel, if I'm remembering Golden Drac correctly, it just feels like a kind of more smooth and more complex version of that original Golden Drac beer, but it gets a thumbs up from me. I do like this one actually. Um, so yeah, just if you like your Belgian beers to be a little bit more malty, um, and, and kind of sweet and with a little bit of hoppy quality then you are going to enjoy this one but it's, it is very very strong I mean share this beer with a friend that's what I'm going to do after this video um, but yeah I do like how the fruity side of this beer comes together there is a little touch of graininess as I say just pushes its way out of this beer and um, the further you go into the aftertaste on the fruity side of things then, as I always say, the fruity side of the beer, the esters come out just in that little oily bubble behind the front curve of the palate. And this beer has some really interesting notes to it actually. So to me, this one has an almost, um, it's got, it's definitely got a little touch of that peary Mister to it. There's definitely pears in here. It has a little touch of an apricot note as well. I think there's a little bit of a darker kind of um, tropical fruit to this. I wonder if, I know you can get Belgian grown Cascade and I wonder if there's a little bit of that in here because if you go to the very back of that oily bubble where those fruity notes come out there's a little bit of, a, there's definitely a little touch of a kind of 
um, almost dark tropically fruit note in there but as you come further forward from that that's when you get the pearly apple esters out of the beer there is a little touch of apricot in there as well and if you go to the very front tip of the tongue you do get this kind of candied strawberry um, black, almost blackberry-ish, red currant-y type flavour at this one. There is definitely an element of a berry candied fruity flavour on the front edge of the tongue there which is really nice. Yeah. I mean this is a, a really quite nice beer. In comparison to some of the other um, sort of Belgian strong use if you like. This one is definitely more smooth and more brown sugary and more fruity and oily and kind of things. Um, but it's a lovely, lovely beer, this one. I wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. The struggle with this one, I guess, is the fact that it's a 750 milliliter bottle. So share this one with a friend and, you know, share it with three people and have a little taste of it each because it is very, very nice. And it's just, it's one of these more it's one of these beers that is a little bit more about the different subtleties and things like that, but it's a big, big thumbs up for me. I wouldn't hesitate to drink it again, just this volume is a little bit difficult to handle if you're by yourself. Um, in terms of the um, the mouthfeel of this one then, the I would say this is quite a full-bodied beer. The carbonation is very, very smooth. The mouthfeel leans towards the oily side of things rather than anything else. Nice little touch of hoppy bitterness to the beer, but I would say you'd be lucky if you're getting about 30 IBUs out of this one. It's got a nice grassy floral quality to it, actually. The things that really linger into the aftertaste with this beer, incidentally, are the a little touch of that kind of floral note some of the fruity notes at the front of the tongue and also the big yeasty bready malt base in there and also some of the brown sugars pushed their way out as well. So there's a whole host of things going on in, with this beer in terms of the, the flavour right enough. Um, but like I say, about 30 IBUs I think at most if you're lucky. Really good balance in the malt base between the yeasty qualities of the beer and the uh, the malty side of things. You've got a nice smooth, slightly thick bready quality to it, but um, you've also got that nice kind of brown sugary, slightly toasty note balancing that out. And you've also got some interesting juicy fruity notes to the beer, uh, which come out also as well. So yeah, a really interesting one this, and just like a very nuanced almost barrel aged version if you like of the original golden drac in my mind but uh, i wouldn't hesitate to drink this beer again and um, if you like your sort of belgian gold to just be that little bit more woody and caramelly and complex then this is one that i definitely think that you are going to uh, that you're going to enjoy so yeah have a go at this beer if you get the chance like i say it's available through say stembo Lager here in sweden and uh, i'm guessing it's a lot more widely available than that in different places and mainly in belgium right enough so yeah it's been let's leave it at that it's been really cool to return to Brauerei van Steenberg and have a look at one of the special golden drag beers and to me it's definitely got a lot of complexity and depth this one so a nice beer to celebrate the 230th anniversary of the brewery and also the uh, Josef van Steenberg as well. So yeah, big thumbs up to uh, the guys at Golden Drac and Barry van Steenberg for this beer. They've definitely made something that is kind of fitting for the occasion. Um, so yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Barry van Steenberg and the Golden Drac, the Pirat and the Augustine range. No doubt I will review more from any of them or all of them in the fairly near future because I do enjoy the beers that they do there but this one is really interesting if you like your Belgian ales to be on the kind of lighter side of the spectrum the more golden side of the spectrum but you do like the kind of complexities that you get from the uh, the quadruples and stuff like that then this is one that kind of finds a good compromise there it's got a good level of complexity to it but it is something that kind of sits um, kind of in the middle of the spectrum but more towards the golden end of things in terms of Belgian beer but yeah a really really nice one this and it's been great to review it for you so I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one so yeah this one was the brewmaster's edition of the golden drag 2019 vintage from brara van steenberge in uh, Erkvelde, just to the north of ghent in belgium thank you again for watching my beer reviews as always please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from brara van steenberge as well and do give me some other beer recommendations in the comment section below until the next time slander just now and i'll catch you guys later the Golden Drag Brewmasters Edition from uh, Brara van Steenberg in Erfelde in Belgium. And uh, you know, check this beer out for yourself. Till the next time, Slange it, Skull, Proust, Santé. Check out this beer. Cheers.